Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. I uh, really appreciate your, uh, your attention and, um, uh, and attendance. Um, I am the CEO of Nano One, founder as well. I, st I started the company back in 2011, so I've been at this 10 short years, um, um, bringing this, uh, this company to where it is today. Um, we uh, have heard a lot about uh, securing our energy future, and I'm going to walk you through our premise on, on how we plan to do that. Uh, we are a public company listed on the TSX in, um, uh, in Canada. Um, this basically just says, don't use my enthusiasm as your investment premise. So um, uh, we saw Simon on the stage with Senator Manchin this morning, and um, I think everyone remembers Simon saying it's going to cost us $3 trillion um, to tip this market up in the next, uh, in the next 20 years. And, and in return, Senator Manchin said, well, you're going to get, uh, it's going to, that's going to give us security supply. We're going to need innovation. We're going to need uh, environmental differentiation. Uh, and all of this is going to have to go big, and we're going to have to go fast. These are the things I heard this morning. And I, and I believe uh, what I'm going to walk you through shows you how, how Nano One is planning to approach this. But listen, we can't do any of that uh, if we continue thinking like we have for the last 20, 30 years. We have to start thinking like the fossil fuel industry, like the uh, fuels that we are going to replace. Um, because those are the kind of volumes we're going to need to drive and fuel the, uh, the energy transition, the energy sector going forward into the, into the future. And it starts with batteries, and there's nothing more synonymous with batteries than the electric vehicle itself. And that supply chain began in the early 1990s with Sony's first digital, first uh, cameras and the first lithium-ion batteries. And that, that supply chain has some issues. Um, there is waste, there is water, there is energy, there is GHG issues all related to that. But by and large, in the volumes that we have been producing since then, um, it's been of minimal concern, uh, simply because um, it hasn't built up in any great amount. But um, if we are to go from hundreds of thousands of tons to millions of tons to tens of millions of tons to serve the 20, 30, 100, 200 terawatt hour future that is looming in front of us, um, uh, we are going to have to change our supply chains. We're going to have to change the way we use materials. And the supply chain we have today simply was not built or designed to replace fossil fuels. So we must innovate and we must collaborate. We can't just keep copying how it's done in Asia. Um, and uh, in the terms of Nano One, and we heard the same thing from Chris on, uh, on his material side, it's, in the, it's really in the active materials that go into the battery where we can make the biggest difference. And that's because that's where lithium and nickel and manganese and cobalt and iron and phosphorus and aluminum and niobium all come together to make a composite material that actually stores energy inside the battery. Very complex set of supply chains all coming into one place. The cathode material is the nexus in the supply chain. It's what governs the supply chain. It governs what type of iron, what type of nickel, what type of lithium goes into the, uh, into the battery, and that begets the supply chain that we're all here talking about and the critical minerals and the chemical form that they come into. And that's where Nano One is focused. We're in the active materials. We make what's called PCAM and CAM in one step, and I'll walk you through how we do that. But um, uh, we, uh, we can't do it alone. Uh, we need competitors. We need partners. We need an ecosystem that's all working together to develop this. And we have partnerships with BASF and Umicore on developing uh, uh, in developing cathode materials using Nano One's technology to drive down cost and environmental footprint and the energy intensity. We've also got a very strong partnership with the Canadian government. Uh, we're looking to do the same thing in the U.S. Uh, obviously, the Inflation Reduction Act and what Senator Manchin presented this morning has gone a long way to sort of driving and catalyzing that uh, forward. Rio Tinto made an investment in Nano One a year ago, almost to the day, of $10 million to... Uh, to partner with on, on uh, iron supply and lithium supply, and we'll go into that in more detail. We work with a number of other um, mining uh, companies, and we also work at the other end of the supply chain, obviously with the OEMs uh, who are looking to build out those supply chains. Um, but look, it doesn't come, uh, the, the rubber meets the road here uh, uh, at the plant level, at production level. Uh, last year, we acquired uh, Johnson Matthey Battery Materials Canada, their, di their, their, their division in Canada, and that is an LFP production facility located just outside of Montreal. Uh, it's a uh, nine-acre piece of land. Uh, it came with a, a very experienced team of about 45 to 50 people. These are people that have been manufacturing lithium iron phosphate for 10 years. It is probably the most experienced production team in North America today. 
Um, that plant itself is, by any standard, very, very small, but it will become a pilot facility for us. And it has been operating for 10 years. It's, it's automotive approved. It's got, a, it's got 500 years of production experience and the people that come with it. Uh, we believe it will give us a tremendous advantage uh, uh, and a tremendous leg up to really accelerate the adoption of lithium iron phosphate. That plant, um, uh, when we adopted it, we, uh, we turned it all off and we are currently retrofitting it with our one pot process to produce LFP. It will be back up in pilot production in Q3 of this year. So it's all coming together very, very quickly. We'll use it for trials, piloting, we'll be, taking, we'll be building our offtakes from that. Those offtakes will then lead to the scale up of a, of a future plant uh, in the in adjacent piece of land and a much bigger expansion plan in central Canada, in the US, uh, in the Indo-Pacific region, and the, uh, and the uh, EU as well. So why are we bothering to change something that's already working? Um, obviously, there's lots of cathode materials being made today, and we're sticking them in batteries between wheels every day. But why are we bothering to change it? And that's because the supply chain is long and complex. I'm not going to walk you through this in gory detail, but uh, the reality is that um, uh, these materials go through a whole series of different steps. There are uh, various repercussions from those steps. And then when you go to recycle the material, it all goes back through the same, same amount of steps. It's long, it's complex, it's wasteful, and it's reliant, heavily reliant on China, as we've heard, and on a very uncertain supply chain. So how do we wean ourselves off of that? Well, listen, it starts, first of all, with the types of materials that are put into the lithium-ion batteries. So, uh, um, and, and this is at the PCAM level. This is where nickel, manganese, and cobalt are combined. Uh, the issue is that they all come in the form of sulfates. Those sulfates come out as a waste stream. And if we get to 300 terawatt hours in 2050, it's a half a billion tons of cathode material uh, will have been produced by then. And we will have made somewhere between one and two billion tons of sodium sulfate byproduct, which has no offtake. Um, uh, it's very expensive to recycle it. And disposal is not an option. What are we going to do with it? It's a, it's, a, it's a big challenge. And we believe um, it's going to be one of the fundamental uh, hurdles for us to adopt uh, these kinds of materials going forward into the future. Um, the second hurdle, uh, actually before I get to that, lithium iron phosphate is also uh, very much um, saddled with problems with this. Uh, China right now makes 99% of the world's LFP. Uh, iron sulfate is their main feedstock. It's a waste stream from a titanium oxide production uh, uh, process, and they're the only ones that have, uh, uh, that produce titanium oxide in that way, so therefore they're the only ones with iron sulfate. Um, are we going to be importing iron sulfate from China? If we happen to do that, we will be in a position where China has a tremendous amount of leverage over the LFP supply chain in, uh, in North America. So uh, again, a, a very big challenge. Um, we also believe the kilns and firing process that's used in, in uh, making cathode materials is just far too expensive. The, we, we make these big, long pizza ovens. They're 60, 70 meters long to cook these materials in. It takes somewhere between 10 to 20 hours, perhaps a couple times through the furnace. Um, and you're heating these materials up over and over again. You're heating up the containers that are in them over and over again. There's a tremendous amount of energy uh, inefficiency in these processes. And the physical footprint of these, of these uh uh, these furnaces is, is huge. Uh, it would take about 35 football fields worth of uh, uh, roller hearth kilns to drive the capacity you would need to fill a gigaplant in, uh, uh, for, an, for an automotive OEM. And then lastly, the um, cathode materials themselves need specialized coatings to protect them from adverse reactions in the battery as you cycle them, as you run the voltage up and down. And those, um, uh, those coatings tend to crack and fall apart, and the, and the material uh, degrades over time as you charge and discharge the material. Nano One has kind of turned these concepts on their ears. So we start, we can go directly from nickel metal powders, iron metal powders, oxides, hydroxides, carbonates, all sulfate free. The result, we have no sulfate waste stream. We completely eliminate the sulfate waste stream. Um, for an LFP point of view, by being able to go from iron oxide with our partnership with Rio Tinto, we can go directly from a metallurgically produced iron metal powder um, that's done under a hydroelectric regime with zero waste stream, going from iron all the way through to LFP, and completely under a hydroelectric um, uh, environment. We believe it will be the cleanest, greenest, and uh, fastest path to an IRA-compatible supply chain um, uh, in, in the world today. 
um, the, uh, on the firing side, because we mix lithium in uh, with the uh, iron and with the nickel in the original process, we are actually able to fire it much quicker in the furnace. Uh, we are firing it hours instead of days. So we reduce the physical footprint and the energy footprint and the, obviously the uh, GHD intensity that comes with it. And then lastly, the coating material is also goes into our one pot process and that uh, basically surface segregates during the, the, the firing process. There are no extra steps and we're able to coat these materials down at the fundamental single crystal level providing uh, added dur durability and cycle life to the material. Um, it is going, to, we, we believe that LFP will be one of the, we're working on NMC and, and high manganese materials, but LFP we believe will be the fastest, cleanest, greenest, and lowest cost path to 100% uh, uh, IRA compatible North American cathode uh, materials supply chain. And with that, I come to the conclusion with 50 seconds to spare. Roger, you'll like that. Um, Nano One is obviously, we're trying to change how the world makes battery materials. We've got tremendous partnerships and we have a, a tremendous team in uh, both on the West Coast and the East Coast in Canada uh, driving, uh, driving this change forward. And we look forward to, uh, uh, to working with everyone here in the ecosystem to bring about this change. Thank you. Dan, thank you so much.